Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me for this shave. We're gonna use a classic, as far as wet shaving goes. This soap comes from the UK. You've probably heard of it. You might have heard some controversy behind it, just in terms of uh, the difficulty in working a lather. Today we're talking about Mitchell's Wool Fat, and I've got it here in the ceramic jar. All right, so before we get into the shave itself, I thought it'd be fun to take a look again at this jar and actually put the soap, kind of a extension of the unboxing, which I'll put a link up here if you guys didn't catch that. But the Mitchell's Wool Fat Soap, I thought this was part of the experience too. So if we're gonna do the fancy ceramic jar, which it turns out, if you see here, it's not quite a crack since you can't see on the inside, but there is a bit of a, I guess we'll call it a scratch. That is something I didn't notice while we're doing the unboxing last time. Not something I'm going to bother trying to get a replacement for because again, it's not a full on crack, but it is a bit of an ugly blemish, but it doesn't affect the shave at all. And it's only slightly bothersome <laughs> anyway. That's a little note on the jar. The soap itself, this is what it would look like if you just buy the refill puck. And this itself has some nice packaging as well. Um, thicker than tissue paper, not quite wax paper. If you guys are more budget-minded but did want to use this, I guess, really, really infamous shave soap, you could always buy just the refill puck and put it into your own container. Whether it be, you know, I know people have use Pyrex, like food containers. That's what my previous puck was in. Um, you can always buy plastic jars. Some people reuse old yogurt tubs and kind of give it a good good cleaning before putting the soap in. So there, there are many options depending how budget friendly you want to get with it. Uh, funny enough, I can smell the soap from here. I'm, it's not super close up to my nose given that I'm behind the camera but it's just a nice, clean, soapy smell. Very pleasant, inoffensive, good for everyday use. Also probably good for any of you out there who are allergic or sensitive to strong smells. But, so what's gonna happen? Just drop it right in. You can see it's a bit loose in the jar, but this is totally normal. You know, this is normal, whether it's Mitchell's or some other brand, uh, sometimes as a soap puck dehydrates, it'll peel away from your container and get loose. If you tub load, or if you just get a little bit of water so that underneath uh, it can kind of mix with the soap, that'll basically provide a glue um, for it to stay in place so that it's not knocking around like this. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to deal with the knocking around in the shave itself because uh, it's not gonna stick to this container until the next shave. Anyway, We've got our puck loaded in our spiffy ceramic jar. The lid sits just on top. It's not a tight seal. If you were looking for, you know, like your Tupperware containers, like for a snap in or something, it kind of just rests on top and that's fine. You should be letting your soaps dry at least 24 hours after use anyway, before covering it back up. But now that we've taken a look and kind of unboxed, unwrapped the final part of this, Let's head to the bathroom and give a shave with this product. All right, so now we're in the bathroom, got my soap unwrapped in the jar. Let me show you what we're gonna use for today's setup. So I figured we're using a classic of wet shaving. Uh, let me go with a vintage razor and this is from Gillette. It's an English flat bottom tech. I haven't used this in a while. This was a great discovery. This very well might be my favorite vintage razor. This is a mild razor, but it provides plenty of efficiency. And the blade I'm gonna to use today is the Gillette Silver Blue. Now in terms of the brush, I have it soaking here. Let me just try not to make a big mess. This is not a vintage brush. I actually don't, I don't really collect or go for vintage brushes. Maybe one day, who knows, but uh, this one, I wanted to use from Trotter Handcrafts this brush right here, which uh, he made 
kind of custom for me based on my logo. And the brush is outfitted, uh, if memory serves correct, uh, with his T1 knot, which is a Manchurian style badger knot, a Manchurian fan badger knot. 26 millimeters, very comfortable to use. So that's the brush for today. Lastly, for the aftershave, because it's not strongly scented, I can kind of pair whatever I want with it. We're gonna go with Fine Lavender Pour Homme. And this one, I believe it's discontinued. Unfortunately, you might be able to find old stock lying around. Uh, I got this one courtesy of a friend of the channel, Sefferton Shaves. Sefferton, thank you so much. Uh, I believe it was probably over a year ago that you sent this over my way, but really wonderful scent. I used to have the soap, don't have that anymore, but you know what, I think the splash, I kind of enjoy any time. Uh, this too is not super powerful necessarily, but you know, Aftershave, I don't need it to last hours and hours. I mean, this might go an hour to two tops, but it leaves me feeling fresh, feeling clean. It's got some, a masculine vibe to it and just really, really easy to wear. So going with this for the splash. All right, so I dripped a little bit of water into the puck, as you probably just saw, and we're gonna start loading. I'm gonna load longer than I normally would, given it's, uh, we're kind of breaking in the soap. I know some folks actually soak the entire puck uh, before use, but I just wanted to see, without doing that, I wanted to see um, what kind of lather we can get. So there will be some editing, cause, Man, I mean, there's only dead air, right? As I adjust the lather, but I'll be sure to walk with you come any, any steps I take in case you're looking for tips or tips and tricks on the best way to get a good lather out of Mitchell's wool fat. Also, I might just refer to the soap as the fat, which it is affectionately known by fans of this soap. That's like after a minute, it's, it is quite messy. Lather is overflowing from the jar and just make sure I have a tight grip on this. All right, so it's about a minute and a half of loading. You can see <laughs> that is uh, the result. Here's what it looks like in the brush. I will totally cop to the fact that we might have to go in in case this is not enough lather. But since I got plenty of this stuff all over the jar, I'm gonna use it. That's, maybe this will help the whole lather process. And because there's not really much scent notes or anything like that to speak of, I will say um, what this reminds me of is a Dove or Ivory Bar Soap, just a clean white bath bar. The main thing to note though, for those who are worried with allergies and reactions or whatnot, this soap does contain lanolin. That's kind of what, that's kind of where the magic is. So, so far, as I've been yammering, it's not a big voluminous lather by any means, but I think I do need more water. So I'm gonna wet the brush now. I think when people have had trouble with the fat, it's getting, um, they're, rather they're getting a really airy, foamy lather. You can see it's not super airy, but at the same time, it's not necessarily super dense, like yogurty kind of lather either. It's somewhere in between. Okay, so let's get a closer look. You can see through my and see my skin a little bit under there. And you can see the stubble poking out. So let's give this a go. Again, Gillette English Flat Bottom Tech.
I gotta say, this is a much more enjoyable experience than the last time I used another Wet Shaven Classic. Um, a few weeks ago, I went live on Instagram with Shaving with Greg Tardif. I'll put a link down below. And that was Greg's first time using Williams Mug Soap. And it was the first time I used it in probably years. And I guess, quick version of it, it's a terrible soap. <laughs> the modern formulation of Williams Mug Soap is terrible. Don't really, don't go overpaying it or it's not even really worth hunting down. I know on eBay I've seen it, a puck or two sold for $20. This is for a shave soap that uh, on the store shelves was less than $2, somewhere between a dollar or two. And that's, that's where it belongs. That is the true valuation. Uh, there's an argument to be made for classic or vintage Williams mug soap, which I haven't used. Sure, and I, I bet, you know, with reformulations and whatnot, I'm sure it's a much worse product than it is nowadays than it used to be. So if you're gonna hunt something down, try the vintage one. But in short, we had, <laughs> we had a shave. We were able to shave, but the lather would disappear. Like I would brush it on, put the brush down. When I came back, the lather was gone or it just deflated really quick. The scent, uh, the scent wasn't bothersome. It was, there was some slight, slight like a citronella vibe, mostly another kind of clean hand soap uh, type of scent. But the fat, Mitchell's wool fat, much better experience. First pass is done too. And I'm gonna rinse up. Just how the face is feeling, not bad. Not overly dry or anything like that. I think um, there might be a little bit of, uh, again, that lanolin, I think, I think, you know, it's really helping. Uh, it'll help with the post shave. In general, it, uh, I think people like using this in the winter when our skin tends to be more dry. Anyway, let me rinse up and we'll get back for a second pass. And now I'm reapplying. This will be an interesting test as I have some res residual water on my face. I wanna see, is it gonna be too thin? And there's some tricks to that too. If you're, um, if, whether you're, the brush itself is a lather hog or it just likes to trap in the lather, you can always squeeze some out. As far as efficiency goes, I mean that, English Flat Bottom Tech does such a great job. We're, we'll be good with two passes today. So I really just need, that, need enough lather, which it's, it's looking good. Definitely thinner than the first one, but as, as a face lather, I'm used to it. I, I kind of I account for it. Okay, so I shouldn't have doubted whether I'd have enough lather for a second pass or not. Now let's go and get right into it. There are certain classic products, soap, you know, software or hard, hardware. And I think it's a fun conversation to know what are, you know, what products belong on that list. What are the must tries? And so today we, we're really trying to tackle that, uh, that question is Mitchell's wool fat worth your time? The last time I had it, I didn't want to spend too much on it. So I did just buy a refill puck that was pressed into some other container. And this was before I ever made videos. So um, it's kind of fun to revisit it. I enjoyed it, but I was still very much I think my desire to try all the different artisan shave soaps, try as many different scents as I could, that was really still at the height of it, kind of that, that newness to the hobby or that, that part of my journey on the hobby. I'm not at that place right now. It takes a lot more for me to be excited about software. And you know, in, in all honesty, right now, 
where, when this is being aired, July 2022, I would say my overall interest in trying out new software is probably at a low. I'm very happy with what, I, uh, what I've tried. Um, there are soaps I have that I've only used once or twice and I really wanna to get to. So in the short term planning, uh, that's, that's what I wanna do. Uh, I, I just wanna give some time to the soaps I have in my collection rather than chasing every new thing down or every new scent, every new artisan. We'll see how that holds. <laughs> we'll see if I can stick to that. But that's, that's kind of what I'm feeling right now. Anyway, second pass. Here, just check it out. Really, no nicks, no cuts. There's definitely, there's resi uh, lingering residual slickness and kind of that, again, that feel. If I didn't rinse my face off right now, it might feel a little tacky kind of if you put on too much moisturizer. I, of course, am going to rinse off and use some post-shave product, but all in all, things went really smoothly today. So let me rinse up and we'll wrap things up. All right, so great shave today. No complaints on my end here. We're gonna finish things up with Fine Lamb Drip Oron. But I did want to wrap up my thoughts on Mitchell's Wolf app. Let me grab the lid. Right there. Okay, so this English soap, Bottom line, is it worth your time? I say yes. I say it is worth your time. Whether you just get the refill puck, you can just hold it in your hand and lather it. You don't even need a container. As long as you're not allergic to lanolin, which is the kind of the standout ingredient. Original 1893 formula prepared with natural lanolin, soothes, softens, and smooths Bradford, Yorkshire. I was corrected in my pronunciation. Bradford, Yorkshire. I think I say Yorkshire. I should know, like a bunch of Massachusetts towns have weird pronunciations. Something that you would think a, a town, a city like Worcester is Worcester. So it's not Yorkshire, it's Yorkshire. Anyway, fantastic soap, fantastic English soap, no less. It's a classic, it's worth your time. But if you're also a wet shaving enthusiast and just trying the products that have long been recommended, some have a cult following even, this one, I'd say put it on your list. It's, it's a good soap, it's a solid soap. So let me know guys, uh, if you have used this and whether you had a good experience, really bad experience, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. I wanna thank you all again for joining me for this shave. I know it's a little bit more uh, laid back, a little more long form than normal. So I appreciate you sticking it through. I hope you found the information helpful and I really wanna wish you guys have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Take care. Today's video was made possible in part by our wonderful patrons. For more information about our Patreon, check out patreon.com slash lathertalk. You can also check out our Etsy store and pick up a comfy lathertalk t-shirt or coffee mug. Find all the links down below.